It having was like Lee... already 30 nil or something, weren't yeah. Well, that, having like... Lee playing downhill in the first half was probably the worst thing you can imagine. <laughs> you know, a better team playing downhill, they, they just kind of got a roll on, and it was just, uh, the, you know, their first try came after they'd bombed a couple of chances as well. So it was, yeah, it was unfortunately one way traffic. It all means Feverson stay unbeaten at the top on 21 points, with Lee just behind on 20. York in third have 18 points, before a four-point gap to Halifax on 14. Batley and Barrow both have 13 points. Sheffield, Brad- Sheffield Bradford, Witness and Newcastle all have 10 points. Whitehaven in 11th have 6 points. Dewsbury have 4 points. London have 3 points. And then Workington are still pointless at the bottom, unfortunately, for them. Loads of championship news. Yes. This first one <laughs> is about structures, and I would give a shout out. We got an email in um, from oh, was it David Hunter who said it? I can't remember now. Someone sent me an email that was long, and I've not fully digested it yet. I think it was David. Um, so apologies for that. I've not included it in the rundown this week. Um, maybe it's something to talk about when it's cup final week. To be honest, league structures because there's only one main game to talk about that week then isn't there um, but Feverson Rovers chairman Mark Campbell has called for a 14 team Super League competition from the 2023 season onwards because we know that IMG are look, one of the things they're looking at is league structure, structure likely to change from 2024 but uh, Campbell wants it to change from next year the side currently sit top of the championship table and are favourites to win promotion to the Super League for next season he said it's 12 at the moment but I think Feverson and Lee have proved over a number of years that they are Super League clubs on and off the field he he contends uh, I would have a 14 club competition from next season he said what do you make of that? Um, I, 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 I'm tempted not to dignify it with a response the only thing that I would say is that um, the one thing I would say for certain is that both Featherston and Lee have proved themselves that they are not Super League clubs uh, on and off the field. They have consistently done that, both um, in terms of their failure to win promotion when they had chances to do so, or indeed um, completely mess it up when they are in the top division. So, no, I don't think they have proven their their worth. Um I think everybody expects that one of them will be in Super League next year. I think that's it would be extremely unlikely that it's not one of the two. Um, but yeah, it, it's a you know it's a it's it's exactly what you'd expect from a guy who's who's mortgaged his future on uh, on getting into Super League. So yeah, it's exactly the kind of thing that you expect that they come out with. Yeah, I, I don't know that the that the sort of certainly the sides that they're putting out at the moment you could say would be relatively competitive in Super League but I don't think they'd be able to put those sides out because how many overseas players they seem to have um, which baffles me at the moment uh, but yeah we'll, we'll see what happens uh, Cumbrian rivals Whitehaven and Workington have swapped a player each in a month long loan deal Perry Singleton will go to Workington uh, sorry go from Workington to Whitehaven meaning that he's played for all three of the Cumbrian clubs meanwhile uh, prop Glenn Riley will head in the opposite direction to Durham Park for a month so yeah I don't understand why they've done that but they've done it <laughs> it just means that uh, Perry Singleton can tick him off on his uh, there you go on his on, on his on his loyalty he's card, got one of them scratch off wall chart things but instead of stadiums <laughs> he's visited it's teams he's played for um, York City Knights have announced the signing of forward Bailey Antrobus from St. George Illawarra Dragons um, until the end of this season. The 22-year-old has signed a training contract with the Dragons early this year, but is now hoping that he can make performances for York that will help him get into the Wales squad for the World Cup. So they're joining in on the signing overseas players. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good we're getting a nice uh, Welshman in, uh, in, the, in the competition. Uh, why even have announced the signing of Castleford hooker Kane Robb on a month-long loan deal? The 19-year-old made five appearances for the Tigers in Super League, I think. He's, he's a promising player so that's good for him to get some game time Barrow have signed centre Matty Costello on a short team term loan deal from Super League side Salford is that the third or fourth team he's <laughs> for this year um, Jewsbury Rams centre Ollie Greensmith has been fined £500 for verbally abusing a fan of an opposing club he shouted fucking dirty slag at a young female supporter of Workington Town during the 1918 win at the Tetley Stadium on Sunday the 24th of April. He's been fined £500 with half of it suspended for using unacceptable language towards a 
Spectator after after a working to try in the 78th minute of that match. That news story actually comes courtesy of our friends at Rugby League Hub, um, Rugby League Long Reads, whereas almost everything else on the Championship and League One comes from the great source that is Love Rugby League. We need to give them credit for doing the reporting. Um, London have moved a fixture to Kent. EFC 78JU has got in touch to say the Broncos will play the Eagles in their fixture at National League South team Ebbsfleet United's Cufflink Stadium. They will play as planned on July the 3rd, 3 p.m. kickoff. Um, the last time they went neutral was in June 2013 at Gillingham FC. I guess the last time he went to Kent, he means. But anyway, yeah, there you go. Uh, former Halifax coach has been appointed as the Norway national team coach as well. EFC 78JU has told us. Liam Stead is now officially the Norwegian national coach and will run the 13s and 9s men's teams. The former Halifax under-20s coach took over duties of David Hunter, who has left for the Netherlands. So there you go. There we go. We can move on to League One. <laughs> Yep, so it was round eight in League One. It finished London Scholars 12, Doncaster 44, North Wales 30, Oldham 16, continuing their tear up the league. Yeah. Uh, Cornwall nil, West Wales 20. Big win for West Wales. Uh, Keithley 40, Rochdale 16, and Hunslet 16, Swinton 28. I think the weather's closing in around me. We're obviously not inside my house, but outside it's making my hay fever go a bit mental. Um, but yeah, I think the weather's going to resemble what it looked like in Cornwall very soon because it was pissing it down for that game. Uh, North Wales keep their 100% record with eight wins from eight played. Aster Keefley with seven wins from seven played. Rochdale stay third on 12 points. Swinton and Doncaster both have 10 points. Hunslet in sixth have seven points. Oldham have five. Midlands have four. And West Wales are off the mark with two points, whereas Cornwall and London are still to get off the mark at the bottom. They are... Big news story in League One this week. Uh, yes. Kind of because it's in League One, I guess it slipped a little bit down the pecking order and under the under the radar a bit and and all that stuff. But everyone loves the you know loved the Bears, loves what the Hurricanes are doing. But this is a real blot for them, I think. Midlands Hurricanes head coach Richard Squires has received a three-month ban due to a breach of the RFL's rules regarding betting on the sport. One month of the ban has been suspended until the end of 2023. The RFL said in a statement, The RFL were alerted in March that Mr Squires has been betting on rugby league matches, including those involving his own club. A compliance investigation found him guilty of breaching a number of operational rules, including the Betting and Related Activity Code of Conduct, which states that placing, accepting, laying or otherwise entering into any wager, bet or other form of financial speculation with any... God, the EFC could have written this without the (laughs) full stop. With any individual, company, organisation or other body in relation to the result, progress, conduct or any other aspect of any match, competition or event constitutes an offence of misconduct. The sentence reflects the fact that Mr Squires complied fully and quickly with the case, accepting his guilt from the outset and showed regret for his actions during a period when he was suffering personal problems. He was aware of the relevant regulations having completed the section of the Rugby League's education module related to gambling. The RFL accept that he did not bet against his club and that he has not made any profit on bets placed on rugby league matches. Hurricanes assistant coach Dave Scott will take charge of the club on an interim basis following the suspension of Richard Squires. I mean, hopefully his personal issues have sorted themselves out, but going into gambling on a sport that you shouldn't be gambling on isn't going to help in that regard, is it? So, yeah, it's a real shame. No, uh, gambling is uh, is not the answer to whatever the question is, uh, frankly. Um, it's a mugs game, uh, sponsored by Betfred. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's oh, it's just so stupid. Yes, it, it's 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 inexplicably stupid. I, I, honestly, I'm I'm slightly surprised I've stood by him, to be frank, because um, it's 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 such a stupid thing to do. Um, that it kind of it, it calls into question all kinds of things, but but they have so I guess that's their own decision to make. But yeah, it's it's just it's it's a very a very very silly thing to do. Definitely, um, League One side Rachel Hornets have announced the signing of ringer, winger Rob Warrency for the rest of the season. Warrency had previously announced his retirement from the game whilst at Sheffield last year, but he's back. They, they Co- pull you back in. <laughs> Core will have announced the signings of Jackson Walker, Adam Rusling, and Lewis Collinson on loan deals. Collinson's been at the club before on loan from Batley, but his deal has been extended until the end of the season. Uh, Walker 
has signed from Dewsbury on a two-week loan deal and Rustling from Hulkar has also made the move for two weeks. And Rochdale Hornets have signed young fullback Phoenix Laulu Tonga guy on two-week loan deal from Super League side Hull KR. Should, should we talk a bit of wheelchair? Yes. There's lots okay. of it to talk there's about. Lots and lots and lots of games this week. So yes, there's, we'll we'll run through the results in uh, in sequence. I think so. Um, first one was Wheelchair Super League. It finished Leeds eighty four, Warrington twenty four. Yeah, and note the bigger scoreline there because that'll have been an eighty minute match. Whereas obviously these Challenge Cup games we're going to talk about with the lower score lines, it's been in some sort of festival style shorter format lots more games yeah because because <laughs> honestly i had no clue they were doing it like this but um, but yeah interesting so yeah it was a in the wheelchair challenge cup it was a round robin format so uh, let's so alternate was, yeah go on so it was hull fc 6 wigan 36 it was warrington nil halifax 18 uh, london roosters nil leeds 20 halifax 36 hull fc 6 warrington nil wigan 30 close one here Catalans nil Leeds 8 yeah Halifax 2 Wigan 11 big win for Wigan over Halifax I think that one with Halifax being one of the top sides you know uh, Hull FC 18 Warrington 4 good win for Hull FC yeah Catalan 30 London Roosters 4 Halifax nil Catalans 42 so maybe Halifax weren't that good this week <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that is a big win Hull nil Leeds 18 Warrington 4, London Roosters 20. Uh, Catalan 30, Hull FC 0. Yeah, maybe Catalans were just good. <laughs> Halifax 6, Leeds 24. Uh, London Roosters 6, Wigan 10. Leeds 8, Wigan 6. Catalan 40, Warrington 0. London Roosters 6, Halifax 10. Leeds 22, Warrington 0. Wigan 4, Catalans 20. Uh, and then London Roosters 10, Hull FC 8. So after that round robin, I think you can see from there the, what, who the standout sides are anyway. It's it's Leeds, Catalans, Halifax and Wigan were the ones we were talking about winning the most, weren't they? They went yep. into the semi-finals, didn't they? They did. So they, they finished uh, Catalan 30, Wigan 6 and Leeds 36, Halifax 6. I wonder if it would have been different if Seb Bashara was playing for Halifax rather than Catalans because he was pretty important, I read, in that semi-final match. Yeah, well, you were speculating last week about you you weren't sure how good Catalan were going to be. The answer is pretty good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, So that means Holders Leeds will play New Boys Catalans in the Challenge Cup final on the 25th of June at the Alam Arena in Hull. Um, We're going to talk a bit about the Challenge Trophy in other games below uh, soon uh, Gravesend Dynamite will play Mersey Storm in the trophy final though as part of the of the double header but we're going to hear all about how Sheffield got on in a minute yeah so it was round 10 in the NRL the magic round copying us uh, it finished Bulldog 6 Knights 16 Sea Eagles 0 Broncos 38 Warriors 30 Rabbitohs 32 hmm Alan Walker said, the White Rabbit murdered the worry, the Warriors in a wet magic and left them sloppy dead. Cody Walker was 10 foot tall in the first half and the ball was dancing to his tune. But yeah, he had super coach Demetrio beaming like a Cheshire cat. But don't tell Alice about how the half time went because the second stanza was wank. Glory, glory. <laughs> great. And then great. it was Titans 20, Dragons 16 and then Storm 6, Panthers 32. Alan Walker said the captain's run in Huddersfield sure paid off as the Panthers ran riot in the rain. Well, that and the fact that the Storm were without Hughes and the world's best haircut. They say you have to play it safe and bash it up when it rains, but the Panthers bashed it up and played like the sun was out. But for all the razzle-dazzle, layering up, fancy dance moves and sweet singing harmonies, it's Yo who who makes this team what it is. And then it was Sharks 10, Raiders 30... Roosters 31, Eels 24, and finally West Tigers 12, Cowboys 36. Yeah, that Bulldogs game, the one at the top there, that's um, that was what was the final nail for Trent Barrett. He, he fell on his sword, which is dignified of him. Didn't wait to be sacked. Indeed. Um, 
terms of the standings, the Panthers are back on top with 18 points. The Storm in second have 16 points, with the Cowboys third on 14 points. Uh, uh, hi, Dizzy Heights.